a chance to talk about you. There's one time during the course of the race that all four of us were running one, two, three, four. Me, Dale Jr., Steve Park, and Dale. Pretty impressive. All three of them DEI cars up there in the lead. I've been so many things in the last 25 laps. I wasn't thinking until the last couple laps and, and see what happens. You just try to position yourself up there where you're in that group and try to be able to make something happen, or if something happens, you can capitalize on it. It's the big one. It's what we've all been fearing. This kind of racing is going to happen. A horrible crash on the back straightaway that began when Tony Stewart got turned sideways against the back stretch wall number 20. You know, it just seemed like this the, the, the lid was about to bo bubble off of this pot here. And it just seemed like with that event, we thought maybe eliminated enough cars to make it come down to where we knew who we needed to race and how we were going to be able to accomplish this. A lot of good cars got taken out in that big crash. And so when the cars are stopped on the racetrack over on the back straightaway, not only are we catching our breath, but so are those guys. And, and, and at, at the same time, they're strategizing. We pulled to a stop uh, on the front straightaway, and um, I'll be darned. I looked in my mirror, and I was leading the race. Um, Dale and Dale Jr. were right behind me. And I thought about his plan, you know. <laughs> I, was, I know he's a great race car driver and a champion, but this is crazy what he called out. Junior was sort of philosophic. It was kind of strange because he, he got on the radio and told the crew, he says, no matter what else happens, he says, Let, let's be thankful because he said, we've had a, a great week, we've had a great race, and we're so lucky that we missed that crash. I remember him coming on there, and I can't remember if it's before or as soon as the wreck happened or during the, the red flag, but he said, Richard, if they don't do something to these cars, it's going to end up killing somebody. It kind of always sticks. That's one of the things I can remember, and I don't remember if at what point he said that, but it was after Tony's wreck. The 2001 Daytona 500 had already revealed the brutal nature of the day's close quarter bumper to bumper banging and bumping. In the final laps, Dale Earnhardt would battle not for victory, but to protect his team. Green flag. There's one point during the race after the red flag where I felt like he let me in line. and. Um, I remember thinking, that's never happened before. I don't think, I know he's never let me in line. I don't think he's ever let anyone in line. You gotta have nerves of steel, folks, to see what these guys saw just now, these cars all flipping and flying through the air and hop right back out there just like it never happened. I was leading the race. My car was handling perfectly. Dell Jr. was pretty safe as well. Uh, because he had Dale behind him, and Dale was just pushing Dale Jr. and me. So we, us two, had it made, basically, and Dale was in a mess. Oh! Look at Earnhardt. Sterling got into Earnhardt. He's getting, Dale is doing everything he can to keep, keep Sterling behind him because Dale knows that Sterling's got a fast car. You never saw Dale Earnhardt Sr. do anything but drive offensively. But in the closing laps of that 500, we saw him on defense. You know he wanted to win another 500. But I think he was going to be perfectly content running third that day. This is when we're going to find out. We're coming around for the white flag. And I thought, if this motor doesn't blow up and the tires don't blow out, I'm going to go down there and make two lefts, and I'm going to come back and win the Daytona 500. Make that back straight away wide, buddy. Get all over the place. Come on, man. Come on now. Watch the mirror. Watch it. He's going to make a run inside. I kept trying to tell Dale Jr. to stay on Michael. And Sterling started coming. 36 started coming. And all of a sudden, there was a lot of activity around Dale for third place. Out on board. Three wide behind them. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. 
last lap at Daytona. Everybody's arguing over space, trying to get your nose in there. If you get your nose in there, maybe you can make the rest of it fit. All of a sudden, I saw his car cut left, and I said, this can't be good. Come on, get him in the four. Get him in the four. The three car is out. Oh! Big trouble. Big wreck behind them. Beat him back. Come on. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. Come you, on. Got it, you, got you got it, man. You got it. 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 about to get the best ride in racing. Man. The Daytona 500 victory lane. Daryl, is this better than winning it? No, it's better. This is great. I was hoping they was okay. I guess he's all right, isn't he? Our car came to rest. I'm thinking, wow. I said, I'm going to go over and just shoot the bull Dale. <laughs> Mikey and Junior run one, two. He got crashed protecting third on the last lap, so he's not going to be in the best mood, but he's not going to be that friggin' mad. So and when I went up to the car and took the window net down, I knew he was in trouble. I, I mean, I, I knew right away he was in trouble and I signaled for the uh, emergency crews to get there like quicker. And they, I mean, they, they were there quick, but just quicker yet. And uh, just knew he was in trouble. I remember when I seen the wreck happen, I just jumped down off the toolbox, yanked my headset off because I knew we had a good shot at, at winning and put my headset back on and, and hollered at um, Dale. I said, Dale, you're right. You're right, Dale, two or three times. He never did answer me. So I turned over to Mike Skinner's channel and I said, Mike, stop over there. They'd done took the checker by that time and was headed down the back stretch. I said, stop there and make sure Dale's okay. Make sure he just didn't undo his helmet and got out. Let me know if, if he's out of the car or whatever. Skinner come on there, he said, you better go to the uh, infield care center. He said, uh, boy, he doesn't look good. We just kept waiting. Come on, climb out. Come on, help him out of the car. Come on, get him out of the car. He's got to go to victory lane. You got to get him out. Junior got out and Again, I, I don't know quite his thoughts at, at that point, but um, his, his thought was, we're gonna go to the, the, uh, uh, the medical center, the care center in the infield and, uh, and see dad. Junior went in and he went through and just caught Kenny Schrader's eye just for a, a split second. And he said it was really then that he knew that, that something, something was seriously wrong. I go to the bus, I get Teresa, Jimbo, the bus driver's with us. And that's when they just got the new infill care center and we went into there. Not really thinking, you know, anything. We get there and they're like, they're taking him straight to the hospital. So now we're getting antsy. Okay, something's up. Richard came in the infield care center and you're sitting in there and you got the, the little curtains and stuff. And Richard, like, <laughs> one of those curtains. What's the deal? I, I probably turned white. And uh, he said, How is he? So that ain't good. And uh, he said, You mean like, we're going to be, we're going to be out for a while? I said, oh no, buddy, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, we got bigger problems. Kenny wasn't himself, you know, he was, he was just as pale as he could be. And he said, uh, took a few deep breaths and he said, look, I'm not a doctor. He had, they had released him from the care center. He said, I'm telling you, it don't look good. It don't look good. And at that point, my heart just fell and 
So we, uh, Judy and I got in the car and uh, went to, headed to the hospital. We, we get in the car and get a police escort to the hospital. We're going um, back roads around, around the turns. I said a lot of prayers on the way to the hospital. Um, that's all I can say. While we're dealing with that, somebody's won the race and he's going to victory lane. Started celebrating what I thought was the greatest day ever in the history of NASCAR, and especially in my history. I mean, it was perfect. Everything went just like Dale said it would, and um, I couldn't wait to see him. drove to the winner's circle to celebrate victory in the 2001 Daytona 500. How could he have known that the seminal moment of his career would be forever shrouded in tragedy? People that didn't know me a month before, now we're all standing in victory lane celebrating winning the greatest race in the world. Everything was just so cool, and it remained that way for probably 20, 30 minutes. We kept watching on the camera, and this looked bad. And, and you can tell by the people around the, the, the car, even though it was in a long shot. Then the ambulance came up, and then Dale was taken out and placed in the ambulance. And then we followed, watched the ambulance going to the hospital. And the ambulance was traveling virtually at walking pace, which meant either a broken back or death. Okay, another subject. Michael Walter finally gets his first win after all these tries. Any reaction? Um, very happy for him. I just wish he could enjoy it a little more because his boss is not there to help him. Okay, we just got work up there. While Earnhardt's driver, Michael Waltrip, celebrates, Dale Earnhardt rides the back of an ambulance to the Halifax Medical Center. The last thing you want to do is overstate the drama of the situation, and yet you don't want to understate the possibility that, that things could go really bad. I was in victory lane and everybody obviously it was a lot of celebration, a lot of happy people and everybody seems to be just overly elated and Michael's got the trophies and Michael's being Michael. What was begin beginning to be more and more odd is no Earnhardt was there. And I remember thinking, where's Dale? I mean, how come he's not here yet? And Dale Jr., how come he's not here? I, I, I'm sure they're coming, right? John Graham, who is the uh, president of the racetrack, came over and he said, hey, who's going to accept the owner's trophy? And I said, well, Dale will be here any minute. Just Dale or Therese or one of these, somebody will take the trophy. And he says, no, Dale, this is Dale's, they're taking Dale over to the hospital. So for the owner's trophy, John basically did the victory lane interview with me, and then he had me stand in the pictures. As soon as we got done with that first photo, I looked over and Ken Schrader walked into victory lane. Mikey, he just won Daytona 500. What a big deal. That was such an important uh, moment for him. I love Mikey like a brother, and I wanted to tell him what I thought the deal was. He made fun of me all the time, you know, about, about not winning. And uh, finally, there's somebody I know coming to say congratulations. I saw him, and I said, can you believe it, Schrader? I won the Daytona 500. And, uh, he just grabbed me and said, it's not good. And I was like, 
Well, it's not really that bad that I won the Daytona 500, is it? I just told Mikey that, uh, you know, that I was awful happy for him and stuff. But, no, listen, Mike, we got a, we got a, we got a big problem here. I'm extremely worried about Dale.